Good day everyone. Today I am presenting a paper on 3T MRI and DWI in evaluation of uterine and end axle lesions under the guidance of Dr. Pratiksha Yadav Ma'am in Department of Radio Diagnosis, D.Y. Patil Medical College, Pune. In females, uterine and end axle pathologies have been the common cause of morbidity. Although most of them are benign, malignant ones are associated with significant risk of mortality. Hence, accurate diagnosis is of utmost importance for timely intervention, which can be done with a good accuracy by magnetic or resonance imaging. Adnexal masses whose origin and nature, which can be either cystic or solid, is difficult to be detected in sonography and are better, better evaluated by MRA because of its precision in characterizing the lesion and defining the tissue of origin. MRA is therefore critical imaging method for detecting uterine and endexal lesions and also separating them from ben uh, the benign from malignant ones. DWI imaging is a functional imaging sequence which works on the principle of random mobility of water molecules within the tissues. Different tissues have variable water diffusion which provides a good image contrast and the exogenous contrast administration we can see the tissues better. Uh, obtained DWI image is analyzed qualitatively by using different strengths of diffusion, sensitizing gradient, nothing but the B values and quantitatively using the apparent diffusion coefficient, nothing uh, called as a ADC maps. MRA with the DW, DW imaging emerged as an optimistic tool in detection and characterization of the various uterine and adnexal tumors, their anatomical extension, understanding the pathophysiology by ADC and, and, uh, by, and by ADC values which is further helps in differentiating benign from malignant lesions. The aim of this study is the utility of the structural MRA and DWI in evaluation of uterine and endexal lesions and its role in differentiation, differentiating between various uterine and endexal lesions uh, into malignant and uh, benign ones. The study is a cross-sectional study uh, where 100 uh, subjects uh, uh, of all the age groups were taken and the variables like lesions of uterus, cervix, vagina, ovaries, fallopian tubes, broad ligament and para ovarian cyst are included. And the duration of the study is, is done between September 2020 to uh, December 2021. The technique we used, all the patients are subjected to the 3 Tesla MRA in magnetum VEDA machine and following sequences are used. T1 weighted imaging is take, uh, sequence is done in axial and coronal planes, T2 weighted imaging in axial, coronal and sagittal planes, diffusion weighted sequence in axial plane, stir sequence in axial, coronal and sagittal plane, T1 fat suppressed in axial plane, gradient echo in coronal and axial planes and contrast is used whenever it is required. Anatomy of the uterus and adnexon MRA. Coming to the anatomy, the uterus is divided into two segments, namely corpus, curled body and the cervix. On T1 weighted imaging, the entire uterus is iso intense to the muscle and it is very difficult to distinguish from the separate anatomical areas. On T2 weighted imaging, the corpus shows three different zones. Endometrium is a central high signal intensity region measuring 3 to 6 mm during the proliferative phase and 5 to 13 mm during the secretory phase. Junctional zone is the one seen in between the endometrium and myometrium, the low signal intensity area measuring 2 to 8 millimeters. Junctional zone shows variable trend based on the myometrical contractions and uterine, peristal uterine peristalsis, which sometimes may be confused with the uterine fibroids or adenomyosis. Myometrium is the zone seen immediately external to the junctional zone and it shows intermediate signal intensity. The uterus normally uh, lies in a position of anti-version and anti-version anti and anti-flexion. The body of the uterus is bent forward on the cervix approximately at the level of the internal loss and this forward inclination of the body of the uterus constitutes anti-flexion. The direction of the axis of cervix depends upon the position of the uterus. In anti-version, the external loss is directed downwards and backwards. When the uterus is retroverted, the cervix is directed downwards and forwards and the lowest part of the cervix is either external loss or the posterior tip. Here, uh, we can see the sagittal T2 weighted MRA image demonstrating the anatomy of the uterus where the one is rep um, represented by the endometrium which is a high signal intensity area. Uh, following is the junctional zone represented by number 2 and next to it is the intermediate signal intensity zone represented by the number 3. So, whereas coming to the MRA anatomy of Ednexa, ovaries are better visualized in pre-menopausal uh, pre women. They show uh, high signal intensity follicles on T1 weighted images. 
and uh, medulla appears as an intermediate signal intensity area. Ovaries gradually atrophy in size with age in postmenopausal women. They are gra uh, gradually enlarged during the proliferative phase and during the pre-ovulation phase reach their maximum size and have an enlarged dominant follicle. During the peri-ovulation phase, the medulla as has a high signal intensity on T2 due to edematous vascularized trauma and even show uh, may show high signal intensity on DWA images likely which is called as a T2 shine through. The fallopian tubes uh, are approximately 10 uh, centimeters long within the superior portion of the broad ligament and normal tubes are not routinely visualized. Uh, coming next are the uterine and endexal lesions. Uh, the following I have listed the lesions which can be both of benign and malignant type. Uh, the list goes as follows which can uh, uterine and red nexal lesions can be of uh, uterine endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial polyps, uterine leomyoma, adenomyosis, endocervical polyps, endometrial carcinoma, cervical carcinoma, benign ovarian cyst, endometriosis, endometrioma, hemorrhagic cyst, metrocystic teratoma and dermoid cyst, benign cystic neoplasms and cyst adenomas which can be of two types which, uh, serous and mucinous type, benign solid tumors like Benus, uh, Tumor, Fibroma, Thecoma and Fibrothecoma, Inflammatory masses like Tuvo Ovarian Abscess which are of benign etiology and Malignant Ovarian Neoplasm. Coming to the study characteristics of these lesions on MRI, uh, the composition of these lesions can be of simple fluid which shows uh, T1 hypointensity and T2 hypo hyperintensity without any enhancement on post-contrast studies. And the common causes can be a functional ovarian cyst, benign cystic neoplasm, inclusion cyst, hydrosalpins and epidermoid cyst. It can be a blood also and the blood appears uh, hyperintense on T1 weighted images, variable on T2 and no contrast enhancement. Uh, and the uh, common causes of accumulation of blood is hematoma, hemorrhagic cyst in ovary, endometriosis and hematosalpins. When, com uh, when there is a lipid composition, it, it appears T1 uh, hyperintensity and as a T2 intermediate signal without any enhancement on post-contrast study. And the common causes would be teratoma, lipoma, liposarcoma and lipoleomyoma. When it is a, of mixoid composition, it appears a hypointense on T1, hyperintense on T2 without any contrast enhancement and or avid type of enhancement. It can the common causes will be angiomyxoma, myxoma, neurogenic tumor, myxoid degeneration of leomyoma. When the composition is of fibroid tissue, fibrous tissue, it appears isointense to hypointense on T1 weighted images hypointense on T2 and, and shows mild progressive enhancement and the composition would be fibroma, fibrothecoma, Brenner's tumor and cystadeno fibroma. When the composition is of smooth muscle, it appears isointense on T1, hypointense on T2 weighted images with moderate enhancement on post-contrast studies and the di di diagnosis would lead to leomyoma. In case if it is the composition is suspected as lymphoid tissue, it appears isointense on T1 and mildly hyperintense on T2 weighted images with mild homogeneous enhancement uh, it, uh, and the common causes would be lymphoma. When uh, we are, uh, when the differential diagnosis based on these imaging characteristics, if the lesion is a uterine fibroid, which has a composition of smooth muscle, it appears isointense on T1 weighted image, hypointense on T2 uh, and hypointense on stir, stir images without any post contrast enhancement. If it is a adenomyosis or adenomyoma which is of epithelial in composition, it appears isointense on T1 weighted image, hyperintense on T2 weighted image, hypointense on stir without any contrast enhancement and without any diffusion restriction. In case of endometrial carcinoma and carcinoma cervix where it is epithelial in composition again, it appears isointense on T1, hyperintense on T2 and stir images with heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement and with positive diffusion restriction can be seen. 
इन केस ऑफ एंडोमेट्रियोमा वेर ब्लड इज द कॉम्पोजिशन इट एपियर्स आइदर हाइपो और हाइपर ऑन टी वन वेटेड इमेजेस एंड टी टू वेटेड इमेजेस हेट्रोजीनियस अपियरेंस इन स्टेट सिक्वेंस शोइंग पॉजिट शोइंग नो पोस्ट कॉन्ट्रास्ट एनहांसमेंट बट शोइंग डिफ्यूजन रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन डी डब्ल्यू ए एंड हाइपर इंटेंस ऑन जी आर ई सिक्वेंसेस इन केस ऑफ सीरस स्टेडिनोमा वेर द एंड म्यूसिनस स्टेडिनोमा वेर द कॉम्पोजिशन इज प्योरली फ्लूड इट एपियर्स हाइपो इंटेंस ऑन टी वन वेटेड इमेजेस हाइपर इंटेंस ऑन टी टू वेटेड एंड स्टर सिक्वेंसेस शोइंग पेरीफेरल एंड सेप्टल कॉन्ट्रास्ट एनहांसमेंट uh and uh, no, showing no diffusion restriction on dw sequence in case of hemorrhagic cysts where again blood is the composition it appears heterogeneously uh, enhancing uh, a heterogeneous enhancement and uh, appears heterogeneous on both t1 and t2 weighted images and stir sequences but showing positive diffusion restriction and the list goes on uh, in case of uh, simple cyst paro variant cyst and hydrosalfins where the fluid is the composition it appears hypo intense on t t1 weighted images hyper intense on t2 weighted images and stir sequence but not showing any diffusion restriction in case of mature teratoma with fat as a composition uh, it appears hyper intense on t2 weighted images with heterogeneous appearance on stir sequence and shows hyper intensity in gre sequences but no diffusion restriction on dwa in case of tubo ovarian masses which are benign in etiology with fluid as composition if they appear hypo uh, intense on t1 weighted images hyper intense on t2 weighted and uh, appears heterogeneous on stir uh, images it shows peripheral enhancement and post contrast studies in case of ovarian torsion uh, the, uh, the torsion appearance of ovary is can be seen as hyper intensity in both t1 and t2 weighted images and stir sequences with peripheral contrast enhancement and diffusion restriction can also be seen on dwi images in case of the uh, tumors like fibrothecoma where the fibrous tissue is uh, uh, seen as a composition we can see them as iso intense on t1 weighted images heterogeneous appearance on t2 weighted images uh, showing hyper intensity on stir sequences and heterogeneous post contrast enhancement and positive diffusion restriction in case of ovarian carcinoma where epithel their epithelial in origin it appears hypo intense on t1 weighted images heterogeneous appearance on t2 weighted images uh, showing a heterogeneous appearance on uh, stir images positive uh, um, positive diffusion restriction on dwi and heterogeneous post contrast enhancement and hyper intensity on gre these are the uh, uterine and adnexal lesions i have included the images first uh, is the uh, axial t1 weighted uh, image showing the heterogeneously hypo intense lesion in the uterus um, and uh, uh, and the below image is a diffusion restricted image showing no diffusion restriction this is a uterine fibroid coming next uh, is the axial t1 weighted image of the uterus which which is seen as a bulky uterus with an ill defined lesion in the endometrium showing central hypo intensity and peripheral hyper intense signal few area of signal loss is, can be seen in these images which could be likely calcific foci and the the image below it is a diffusion restricted uh, di, uh, diffusion weighted image showing peripheral uh, diffusion restriction and the next image is a carcinoma cervix uh, which can be seen in the axial t1 weighted image showing bulky cervix with ill defined hypo intense lesion showing uh, uh, and the uh, the below image is the diffusion weighted image showing peripheral diffusion uh, restriction and th and the fourth image is a uh, axial t1 weighted image showing a large multiloculated heterogeneously hypo intense solid cystic lesion in the right adnexa uh, showing thick septae uh, and peripheral projection Uh, on diffusion restriction showing uh, on dw image showing uh, diffusion restriction coming next is a, uh, a tubo ovary ovarian mass uh, which is a benign etiology of benign etiology we can see uh, this is an mri pelvis image showing tubo ovarian mass in the right adnexa uh on uh, axial t2 weighted image a large retort shaped lesion is seen in the right adnexa showing peripheral hyper intense signal and central low uh, intensity content on axial t1 weighted image uh, the lesion appears hypo intense and and stir image is depressed hyper intense on post contrast uh, images uh, uh, th this lesion shows a peripheral enhancement um coming next is a endometrioma 
uh, here is the image showing uh, uh, bilateral ovarian endometriotic cyst on axial T2 weighted image which has seen as a two well defined hyper intense cystic lesions in both ovaries showing T2 uh, shading sign axial T1 weighted images uh, appears uh, they, these appears hyper intense on uh, a T1 fat set images these lesions appear hypo intense and we, I have included the diffusion restricted uh, DWI images with uh, also the low ADC maps. Uh, the lesion is showing diffusion restriction with corresponding low ADC values. So the observation in our study included out of 100 patients we have taken, 54 patients uh, were uh, seen to have uterine lesions and uh, uh, 46 patients uh, uh, have the adnexal lesions. Of the uh, uh, total uh, uterine and adnexal lesions, uh, 77 were observed to be benign and 23 were observed to be malignant. And uh, all the findings were correlated 100% 100 in our MRA using the diffusion restriction. So the conclusion of our study, uh, in our study out of the 39 benign uterine lesions, 0 lesions show diffusion restriction and out of 15 malignant uterine lesions, 15 all the 15 showed the diffusion restriction and out of the benign no no lesion showed the diffusion restriction so dwi has a significant role in differentiating benign from malignant uterine lesions on the other hand uh, the dwi sequence with uh, adc cutoff value was not very significant in differentiating benign and malignant adnexal lesions because uh, DWA alone cannot, cannot differentiate endometriosis and uh, tubo ovarian masses which are of benign etiology from that of the malignant lesions. So in the adnexal pathologies, additional sequences like T1 weighted image, T2 weighted images, T1 post contrast images are required for the complete evaluation and differentiation. These are the references I have taken for my study. Thank you. Uh, thank you Indian radiologist team for giving me this opportunity.